What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting coilovers on my Corolla, my E86. Uh, this is my first car I'll ever have coilovers on because I never got around to putting them on the MR2. Uh, this is the ride height right now. It's uh, I think stock. The last one I put aftermarket shocks because the old ones were shot, but I think the ride height is just about stock. So today we went with Annex suspension, supposedly the best coilovers made just for the E86, and um, I got the Swift Spring upgrade. So we'll unbox this, see what they look like, and uh, install them. I see the green, I see the blue, and I see the red. <laughs> Off-road use only. So, right off the bat, we've got red, blue, green, black. Uh, yeah, it's got. It's gonna be a whole rainbow under the car, and uh, we got some sweet stickers: Swift Springs, Annex suspension, probably the owner's manual, Bruh. and a sweet lanyard if I want to rep their. Uh, Suspension burn, I guess. These are the coilovers for the back. Since this isn't the uh, true coilover, we have the springs separated from the uh, shocks, which are over here, and then the fronts are true coilovers. These springs are supposed to be sort of stiff, but provide a nice ride quality and daily driver uh, type feel. We're probably gonna do the fronts first because they're gonna be the easiest, and uh, that's what the uh, shock tower is gonna look like. Not really sure what all of these do, but we'll have to figure that out. So we swap the car around. Front end facing out of the garage. We got more room to work on the wheels. And uh, now it's time to finally put the coilovers in. So the first thing that we've done so far is we took out the brake cables. So um, that's out of this little bracket right there. And um, I think there's two bolts right here. And then three or four up, three up here. And uh, we should be able to slide it out and just slide the new one in. Next step in this process, after we did the brake and um, we took out these two bolts right here, is um, I think we have to take off this tin cap and there's gonna be a bolt under it. And uh, hopefully once we get this off and the bolt, this whole thing will just be able to be removed and then we can slide the new baby in. So I just took the last bolt up out top. We're prying down to get this baby out. And uh, it's just stuck on this one nut down there. You think I should maybe stand on it? Try to try You're to put some weight on it. Yeah, let me get a let me get, stand on it! Let me get a better angle. Yes, yeah, sir! One is out. That thing looks so ugly. 36 year old shocks right there. We have no water in the house, so we're drinking Bush instead. And uh, about to set the first coil over in. Gotta take out the two bolts at the bottom. And uh, yeah, should be an easy thing of hopefully putting it in if I just step on this enough. And uh, yeah, first one's going in right now. Okay, okay, hold it. Hold it up more. Go, oh, babe, put that phone in. Okay, they're in. So, a little progress update. Um, these were on top. Make sure when you do this, guys, we had to redo it because uh, we had these. We were reusing the stock ones, but there were some already on here. So, make sure to take those off, use these, or else uh, that would be catastrophic. We're getting the bottom ones on, and uh, now we just have to put everything back, put a little grease on the actual spindle itself, and uh, then on. This is a couple hours later, we've had to run to Home Depot to get a tap and die set because the outer tire rod was uh, stripped. Uh, we had to go to AutoZone to get some 
of these pins over here, the uh, cotton pins, and this one is all the way on, brake lines are done. I uh, haven't bled them yet, but the disc brakes and the rotors, everything is on. Got the cotton pin under here, and uh, yeah, so this one's all ready to go. We're finishing up this one. We're not going to bleed the brakes, but we're going to take the car out slowly out here and uh, reverse it back in, or go the other way in so that we can do the rears. We're hoping that those are easier than the fronts because the fronts kind of took a lot of time. Hopefully the rears aren't as difficult. All right guys, so the wheels are on. Moment of truth. Uh, don't know how much lower it's gonna be. Uh, but we'll see in just a second. Hey, that's actually pretty low. So uh, yeah, we don't have as much gap as before. Check the other side, see if it's even. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, it. What do you think? Yeah, kind of lower. Kind of lower, right? Yeah. We turn the car around, and uh, now it's time to start on the rears. <laughs> like the front, super old. Um, springs. Happy to get these green ones in and uh, the back will look a lot more colorful. The reason why we think these are going to be easier than the fronts is because there's just one bolt down here and then I think one bolt up here, right here under this perch. I think I just take it off. Nearly two minutes later after getting this off, got the shock out, got the spring out, still need this. Let's put that back in there. You want to keep that so it's not a super we're off on the road. It's getting pretty late, but we're not stopping. We got the bottom bolt in and the shock. Shock is way lower than the actual old one. It's like half the size, so we'll have to see about that. But um, we're gonna jack up the rear end and uh, the shock will go in the perch right there and uh, we'll be good to go. We got both of the rear ones in now. Over there and over there. And the only thing that we need to do is adjust the preload and we should be good to go with that. Hopefully the ride height that Annex suggests is a good ride height. Because that's what we did. But uh, it kind of looks like it's going to be really, really low. So we'll figure it out in just a second. We're doing one of the final steps except for the bleeding of the brakes. Which is setting the preload. We have to make sure the spring uh, gets all the way to the top. And then we have to compress the spring 6 millimeters shorter than it was outside of the car. So we're going to do that now and uh, I think this should be the easy part. So we got the wheels on and everything. It's lowered um, a bunch compared to where it was before. We're going to bleed the brakes and then lower it down. Hopefully these uh, springs are really tight and they don't press more because uh, this is kind of the desired ride height for right now until uh, Maybe I get out of this apartment. Because the way to get outside of this apartment is super hilly and stoppy and hilly and stoppy and it's just, it, it won't work with uh, low cars. So hopefully it's not too low. Brakes are bled, wheels are on. So the only thing left for us to do is lower it and see if we're going dirt nasty low. I am tucking in the rear and I'm not really tucking in the front so I don't know if that means we should lower the front more or that means we should raise up the rear. Get, go, let's, you want to just try going for a test drive? Yeah, I'm going to try going for a test drive. We'll go for a test drive, see if the back rubs, see if the front rubs, see if we can lower the front anymore if it doesn't rub and see if the back rubs since it's so low.
Hope you guys did enjoy the coilover install. We are gonna adjust the fronts uh, tomorrow because I look like I'm pimping right now and the hydraulics about to kick in any second. So we're gonna lower the fronts down just a little bit more and the backs are fine. Hopefully uh, the fender goes over because uh, the wheel looks like it uh, sticks out just a little bit more in the front than the rear because kind of not even flush here so uh, we'll see tomorrow how it works out.